Im internationalen Zuverlässigkeitssport liegen seit Jahren Maiko Motorräder an der Spitze. Diese normalen Serienmaschinen unter den härtesten Bedingungen erprobt, halten im Stadtverkehr mit ihrem enormen Anzugsvermögen diese Spitze ebenso wie auf langen Strecken mit hohem Reisdurchschnitt. Das ist so schnell. Spaß, mit meiner Maiko Blitzer geht's noch schneller. Wunderbar bequem, trotz der hohen Geschwindigkeit. Das ist bei der Maiko Blitzer selbstverständlich. Vorne schwinge, hinten schwinge. Wie ein Brett liegt die Maschine auf der Straße. Aber noch wichtiger, trotz ihrer 14,5 PS ist diese 250 Kubikzentimeter Maschine sehr sparsam im Verbrauch. Schnell, komfortabel, einer der großartigsten deutschen Zweitakter. Und deshalb fahren viele nur noch Maiko. That was a German Maiko commercial from the 1950s. So I get a lot of comments on my videos about Makos. There are people who question the quality of Mako as if it was some knockoff manufacturer. There are even some people who go as far as to say it's some kind of China bike. I will read a few of these comments for you here. One does not simply beat the CR500, they must first have sex with it, then ride a 700cc bike that is from China that will probably shit itself over 80 mile per hour and then go back to the much better and faster, more and more reliable CRKX500. Um, Chinese? Well, sorry about my foul language about these Makos, but it still, it fouls my nose smelling shit gas, but when shit Japanese bikes are still hauling ass or Red House KTM, who's a burg? What the F? Wart is fouled. Mako is a piece of shit off-brand by a Honda or Suzuki if you want to win races. Mako is the worst shit ever made. Honda rolls. Mako sucks dick. Now I actually get more positive Mako comments than negative ones though. A majority of those are from people who have owned Makos or want to own Makos. The former seem to be uh, younger kids. Uh, some are trolls, of course, but I believe there are a lot of them who generally don't know a Mako from a Hodaka. Uh, this video is for those individuals who don't know the history, the quality, and just are not familiar with Makos. Starting off, though, to give some more context to those who are not familiar with, with Makos, I will read some of the positive comments I get to counterbalance the negative ones. I won't read all of them, but I'll, I'll flash some of them up. I had a 1984 40 Mako, the best bike I ever had. I also had a KTM 420. I could not touch the 440. I wish I still had the 440. I had a 400cc Scrambler in the early 70s to scare the life out of us. I wish I still had it. I miss blasting past the pretty boys on their brand new water cooled jet bikes on my ugly old steed. They come up to me later and ask, What the hell is that? My reply, It's a Mako, motherfucker, and yes, it bites. Love the Mako. Rode my 75 and 77 for years. Just sold them a few years ago. Other bikes just don't can't compare with the power they had. I'm looking for an 83 model to retire with. Thanks, Mako. Bought and raced a 450. Crazy torque and most of them I've ever owned. And I've owned quite a few bikes over the years. Missed the hell out of those days. If you ever rode a good two-stroke, a large big bore Mako, you'd be hooked. Very manageable power, power that got to the ground. I went back to Suzuki in 1980, and Suzuki never measured up. I'll start off here with a small Q&A session to get some of the most common questions out of the way when it comes to comments. Uh, following this up, I'll do a comparison of Mako against bikes I've been told have the quality that Mako needs to be measured against. For example, Honda. Kidding me, you son of a crap! Oh my god! What 
Actually, Meiko is a German company founded in the 1920s by Ulrich Maisch, one with his two sons, Otto and Wilhelm Maisch. Over the years, Meiko has produced bicycles, uh, micro cars, luxury cars uh, in the 1950s. Also, along with that, scooters, uh, various scooters and mopeds. Um, they've also uh, even made uh, engines for uh, mini bikes, as you can see here. And of course, dirt bikes, one of the things they're most popular for, but even sidecars. They're pretty much the Husqvarna of Germany, except they've never made a sewing machine. Well, in the 1970s, for off-road motorcycles, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Yamaha were the off-brands. CZ, Husqvarna, Baltaco, Mako, for example, were all the on-brands, the European bikes. CZ, which, believe it or not, is actually a Czechoslovakian company. I mean, how many kids today could even imagine Czechoslovakia or, well, Czech Republic or Slovakia releasing their own dirt bike these days? But they were dominant in the 1960s and early 70s. So when the Japanese got into the business, they needed a springboard. That springboard basically means copying everyone else's existing mechanics and releasing their own bikes. The proof of this is in the pudding. Um, you also take into account that Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Kawasaki are huge companies compared to Mako or Baltaco. So when they came in with their dealer network, their magazine editors in their pockets, it plays out like the movie Tucker, A Man in His Dream. So in 1973, when Honda released the Elsinore CR250, their boring stroke was 70 by 64.4. In 1974, Yamaha released the YZ250, and its four-inch stroke was 70 by 64, so they get to copy Honda. So in 1974, Kawasaki also was the KX250, and their four-inch stroke was also 70 times 64. Oh, wait a minute here. Then in 1972, Suzuki had released the TM250, which was 70 times 64. Well, wait a minute here. So everyone is using the same bore and stroke practically. They're copied off of Suzuki. Well, actually, uh, CZ250, since 1963, had been using 70 by 64 as their bore and stroke. And then in 1976, Suzuki released the RM250. Their bore and stroke was 67 by 70, which is... Um, completely different from from the other ones. So they came out with their own. Well, wait a minute here. This is a brochure from Mako from the early 70s. And this 250 has the same bore and stroke. Well, yes, that's correct. Actually, they copied it from Mako. And, in fact, they actually copied some of their other bores from Mako. And as well as, for example, the RM370 piston as well as 250 pistons will fit unchanged into Mako's. And so before when parts were scarce, people were actually using those pistons um, a long time back. But um, and, and there's many other examples um, that we could go into. However, there's one more thing I just want to read here. One of the largest contributions to the world of motocross suspension technology came in 1974 season when the Wheel Smith Motorcycles team in the USA and the Gunther Schneer teams in Europe forward mounted the rear shocks on the Mako factory backed motorcycles, immediately increasing the travel and ability to trump the competition. This initiated a frantic effort on the part of the factory teams and privateers alike, chopping up their frames in a desperate attempt to remain competitive. All right, so before you get really defensive or start getting crazy or thinking that. I'm trying to bring down Honda, Suzuki, and everybody and everything like that. No, the point of this was simply to show that Mako is not an off brand. In fact, I mean, if you look at the history, they don't, none of them, none of these bikes use that born stroke anymore for their 250s. In fact, if you look at the history, like, like Yamaha went to like a 68, 68 at one point, and then eventually in the late nine, 80s, Honda went to something that gradually all the rest of them copied. 
So now they, again, they, I think they all have the same boring stroke from what Honda had put out in the late eighties. But anyhow, the main point here is number one, you don't copy something you think sucks, right? So if Mako and Suzizi and these guys had something that they thought sucked, why would they be using the exact same thing? Uh, and the second point is um, this history should show that Mako is actually not an off-brand. It is simply a small manufacturer. So the next thing everyone complains about or mentions in the comments is the left hand kick. So, well first you have to understand that back in the early 70s, all the European bikes, they had left hand kicks. CZ, Husqvarna, KTM, Voltaco, all these bikes, they all had left hand kicks. Mako, um, even more recent bikes, you know, like Husaberg, they had left hand kicks, ATKs, I think they even had left hand kicks a long time ago. So, it, so left hand kicks is nothing that's unique or specific to Mako. And the next thing is, if it's such a bad thing, I mean, if people always bring up Honda right in the comments, as you can see, as a example of quality. Um, but Honda actually went to a left hand kick in 1978. And they kept the left hand kick until they switched back in 1984. So, which is actually the same year Miko went bankrupt. So, <laughs> and, and wasn't no longer on the radar. So, but anyhow, so the reason why Mako's today still have left hand kicks um, is just because, again, they went bankrupt in 1983. They were briefly picked back up by the Suns of Wilhelm Mahesh Sr. Um, but that was short lived and by 86 they were, they were gone and then for the most part Mako was just picked up by someone who was just reproducing the bikes for the most part and doing very little um, innovation. Some innovation happened but um, you know like power valves came on stuff but um, hydraulic clutches eventually and but maybe kick it and passed around but for the most part there was no major change in the design of the actual transmission of the engine for the most part there's like little things being done but it wasn't like a drastic thing and not enough was done to make it so that they would switch over to not using left hand kick and again like i said back even going back Husaberg. You know, if you're releasing things just in Europe, for the most part, I mean, European bikes generally have left-hand kicks. So, that's why Mako has left-hand kick. In the next part of the series, we will show a side-by-side -side comparison against comparing the various components of the Honda CR500 engine design against the Mako 490 500 engine design. And in this, we will show the selection of materials, how things are put together, the design, and then we'll just do a side-by-side -side comparison there so that you can come to your own conclusions as to how you feel the quality of Mako uh, stacked up.